I got one and I was like, no, it's okay. And then I got another one and I was like, oh, interesting. And then I was suddenly searching for Hoyas and researching Hoyas and ordering Hoya cuttings. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I can't stop. Just about to start filming. I've noticed my Boston fern is looking so sad. So I'm just about to give him some of my water. I'm sorry. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today. It is a miserable day here today. It's cold, it's wet, it's rainy. It is just not the kind of weather that inspires productivity. I've just got back from a very wet dog walk as well. So I've made a rather full cup of coffee to attempt to warm up. And I thought today we could just do some kind of cozy rainy day plant chores. I've got lots of things that I've been putting off for a while. I'm looking at one specifically right now. And yeah, I just thought we could work through some planty things together. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And yeah, so as always, get comfy, grab some plants, we can have a catch up as we go and help each other get on top. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So seeing as I'm here, I just want to give you a quick update because I am sat next to this plant and oh my god, it smells amazing. It is the Coleus amboinicus. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, but it's commonly known as Cuban oregano and you can totally tell why. It smells not just like oregano, but kind of like a combination of oregano, mint, basil, like it just smells beautiful. And I swear to God, when it's raining, it smells more intense. I don't know if that's anything to do with like room humidity or anything like that, but it's just a really gorgeous plant. It's one that was actually sent to me by one of you guys as well. And I love it so much. But the reason that I wanted to give you an update on it is because I'm growing this plant currently in quite an unconventional way and I'm actually playing about with using an organic substrate without drainage, which is always something I say not to do. So it's very early days for me experimenting in this way. I know some people have had amazing luck doing it this way, but the plant is really, really happy and it's giving me the most insane growth right now. So I'm really excited to keep you updated with it and hopefully be able to come back to you with a little bit more information on it soon. But yeah, it is just a stunning, stunning plant. But I thought as we went through and we did some plant chores today, I could circle back to some of the questions that you guys have asked in previous videos that I haven't got around to answering because there's always questions left over and I'm like, ah, I didn't get around to that one. Uh, but the first one is actually not related to plants, but it's one that I have addressed a few times recently and it's a question that keeps coming up and it is what is your skincare routine? And if you guys have watched my other videos, you might have guessed that I have been struggling a little bit with my skin recently. I've had lots of hormonal breakouts, I've had melasma, and I just haven't been able to find a good skincare routine that works well for me. And don't get me wrong, I know that there is so much more to life than skin, but I just find it, I find it like a form of self-care and I find it really relaxing, really calming. And so anyway, a few weeks ago, a company called Forio reached out to me and they asked if I would like to try out their new UFO three, which is this little thing here. And I was really intrigued about it. So thank you, Forio, for partnering with me for today's video. I also just want to start off by saying, as you guys know, I only ever work with brands that I truly love and have tried and tested. But this little thing has honestly changed the game for me and my skincare routine. In a nutshell, it's a deep facial hydration device. It works best when used alongside their sheet masks and they very kindly actually sent me some to try out and I love all of them, but my absolute favorite is called H2 Overdose. You just pop the sheet mask into the device and then use an app on your phone to select the treatment. There's also manual offline settings too if you don't have access to your phone. It then uses a combination of cryotherapy, thermotherapy, LED therapy, and T-sonic massage to give you the equivalent of five spa facials in one. And oh my goodness, can you feel a difference afterwards? You can then repeat the treatment if you want to, or you can create your own custom treatments, which is what I've been doing most days because I've been really interested to try out green light therapy for my hyperpigmentation. 
Now I'm always really skeptical about stuff like this. So I took before photos and I took after photos and I took daily photos and I tried to take them in the exact same light, the exact same angle and genuinely looking at them throughout the week, I can tell a massive difference and I have not been this happy with my skin in a really long time. If you would like to give it a go, then you can get 30% off when you click the link in the description box below. And on top of that, the first 50 people to click the link below and use my code will also get an additional 10% off. So I'll leave all the details you need down below and thank you again Foreo for partnering with me. Right, let's get into some planty things, shall we? And oh my goodness, I must just show you how organized uh, relatively speaking, organized the cupboard of chaos is at the moment. I had a really big, really big sort out over the weekend and I got lots of things in there organized. I had a big clear out. I put some pots that I'm not using very often up there on top of the fridge and it just feels so much nicer to get into. Granted, it's definitely not perfect, but it feels much more manageable. And I'm aware I don't usually sit down here to do planty things, but it felt like the most practical space to be in this morning, just because I'm working with my philodendron splendid. And this is a plant that has kind of been on a bit of a steady decline for a while. It's so, let me just turn it around so you can actually see her. Um, but it's such a gorgeous plant. It's one that I've grown from a teeny tiny cutting. And there's sections of her I mean, actually, none of her's looking particularly healthy. There's some leaves that are healthier than others, but she had pests fairly recently. And you might remember I made a video where I moved her onto my desk um, to kind of like keep her away from the other plants and all that sort of stuff, trees to for pests. And she just hasn't done very well. And she was really, really dry about a week ago. And I was like, okay, I'll give her a water through. And I just don't know what happens, but literally the next day, loads of leaves were yellowing. And now I've got leaves like that, which are obviously not bouncing back. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely chop her up and I'm gonna reset her, restart her. I probably should have done it sooner anyway because she has been looking a little bit raggedy. But yeah, that's what I'm going to start with. And actually I went on, oh my God, such a tangent over the weekend when I was moving her out of the way and I was like having a bit of a rejig of everything, I decided to essentially have a very big rearrange and I've now put my bird of paradise on my desk. Uh, it's messy in here because <laughs> the organise hasn't finished, but I don't know if you can see. That's what it's looking like. So actually it's much clearer behind the sofa now, which I quite like. I like mixing up things with my plants and like the layout and stuff fairly regularly, but this feels, I don't know, it feels a bit cleaner, a bit clearer, a little bit more manageable. Um, and it feels like it's letting more light through, which it probably is just because everything's got a little bit more space to be maneuvered and light to pass through. So she has got a root system in the pole. And also, so this is the first thing I wanna do. I just wanna see underneath the caterpillar here, how badly this new leaf is affected because she is starting, in fact, has like a new leaf fully formed. Um, I just wanna see if there's like any damage there or what, like, I know some people say don't chop and prop if there's a new leaf unfurling, but actually, I think this one's gonna be affected regardless. Sorry, this is a bad angle for you to see. Because yeah, that's what it's looking like. And actually, it looks absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. So what I think I'll probably do is I think I'll just take a top cut to start and then I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep other leaves. Obviously some are kind of on their way out. Mm. In fact, let me take a cut down here. Okay, that is a huge, huge top section I've got. 
Uh, and actually, these two leaves are the only two that are looking not fine, like there's a bit of damage on them, but they're not looking bad. So I feel like maybe I will propagate this top section as one. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave this to one side for a moment. It's not a particularly, it's gonna sound like a weird thing to say, but it's not a particularly like juicy stem. Um, so although it will benefit from a little bit of callousing, it's probably not one that you need to leave for uh, like days and days and days on end. So yeah, I'm gonna set this to one side. And then the rest of it, I don't think I'm gonna keep any of these leaves. I don't think there's any point at all. So I'm just gonna chop it up and I'm gonna take the wet sticks and then get them into either a prop box or a cup. We'll figure that out in a moment. lovelier. <sighs> so I've got some root system in the moss pole here. I'm just going to try and, oh it's so tangled in there. One, oh sorry, because this camera positioning is awful. Um, one thing I really don't enjoy, <laughs> I find incredibly tedious, is trying to take big roots out of the moss and to be honest they're so big in there if I do need to do a little bit of trimming I think it should be okay, a little bit of root pruning. Um, I'm just gonna start off by chopping these sections. Okay, I'm gonna leave that bottom bit for a moment, but I've got several very big, chunky and partially rooted wet sticks here. So I actually set up a very shallow prop box the day before yesterday and I'll bring it over. Yeah, so as I say, once these ones start to push out foliage, this is probably gonna be no good because it is very shallow, but I had just got a gap on a shelf over there and I was like, oh, I know what I could fit in that another prop box. So I'm gonna pop them into here for the time being. I've only got a couple of, ooh, a couple of very little things in here at the moment. So, so yeah, I do hope they start giving me some new growth soon. And then I can get my lovely plant back again and actually grow her a little bit fuller this time with more than one stem. Because, yeah, I honestly, I've just really let this plant go downhill. And it's such a shame because I love my Philodendron Splendid. But, yeah, sometimes things just sadly get overlooked. And that has very much been the case with this one. But, yes. Also, I was going to say, if you do use these for propagation, 100% keep an eye on them. Because I had a box, in fact, it was this box, exact box, dry out quite recently. And I hadn't checked it for... I don't know, maybe three months, and I know you should probably check your props a little bit more regularly, but I just assumed everything was fine and everything was bone dry and I lost several really nice plants. Um, but yeah, we will come back to these in a month or two and check on them and see how they're doing. But for the time being, I'm gonna just put them on that bottom shelf and not forget about them, but just make sure they stay hydrated and that is all I will need to do. Oh, and then this big top section here. My go-to is always to root and sphagnum moss with, with philodendron. I know there's lots of ways you can do it. That's just the way, personally, that I like to do it. Um, I am just gonna give a few of these little brown patches on the leaves a trim back. As I say, it is just kind of superficial, but if I'm gonna have this plant out propagating, I'd like it to look a little bit healthier, so going to follow the natural pattern of the leaf and just give it a little trim back. And now 
Now I'm not sure if this container is gonna be big enough. I don't... Well, actually maybe it will be. Yeah, you know what, just to get it started. I think it probably will be. And the good thing about it is it kind of holds the leaves a little bit closer together, uh, which I like because they are quite fast spread otherwise. Perfect, cool. As I say, I'm gonna go in with sphagnum moss. Also, I've just realized I copied out all the questions that you guys had asked and I've got them sitting here and I have just been forgetting to go through them. Uh, so as I do this, I'm going to carry on going through them. And the first one was, do you find restraint, let's start that again. Do you find restraint easy with buying plants? Um, I, I think, <laughs> I think I am better than I was, like definitely better than I was when I first started getting into plants. My God, like when I first caught the houseplant bug, which I feel like, I think most of us can probably relate to the fact that once you get the bug and you don't just have one or two anymore, you have the desire to get loads because you just want your house to look planty and you want to be doing plant care stuff all the time. Um, so yeah, I used to struggle to even walk past, not even a plant shop, somewhere that sold plants without going in and buying something. To be honest, even if I wasn't, like in, like even if I didn't love the plant, I would often just be like, oh, well, it's a splash of greenery, so I'm gonna get it anyway. Um, and I've definitely got better with that. I think now that my collection is so big, but I like very refined and I love it, I am much better at like looking at something and being like, I really like it. Do I think it's worth it? Like, am I gonna want to take care of this plant in six months time, for example? And a lot of the time now I do find myself kind of looking at stuff and being like, oh, and then putting it back. Um, I did that quite a bit at Wisley. I know I said I went to RHS Wisley recently and there were several other plants there that I was looking at and thinking of getting and I decided not to in the end just because I was like, I don't think I love them enough to buy them. Um, and yeah, actually like I, <laughs> I was chatting to some of my oh, planty friends the other day um, and I was saying I feel like so far this year, although I have bought plants, all things considered, I think I've been a little bit better than I was this time last year. <laughs> So I think, yeah, I think, especially when you've like filled up your space, which I feel like I pretty much have, you do get better at just kind of reflecting in your collection and seeing what you actually want. So I think the answer to your question is yes, I have got better with practicing, what was it? Practice it, do you find restraint easy? But yes, I think, I, I think I'm finding it easier as time goes on. Uh, that being said though, I have still got a very long wish list of plants that I do very much want and would like to get at some point. I'm just not in as much of a rush as I used to be, I don't think. But yeah, so that one is done and I'm going to put it over... Where am I going to put it? Oh, in fact, I know where I could put it. There is a little space by my desk where I did, up until yesterday, have my Alocasia Jacqueline, um, but I had a little bit of a switcheroonie, uh, and now, oh, that's gonna just get beaten by Yoli's tail though, isn't it? I was gonna say that could go there, because there is a space now for a plant there that is not currently filled. Or I just put it back under the bird of paradise, which is just here. I think whatever I do, I'm gonna need to put it into a slightly heavier container because it is just gonna topple over otherwise. So let me do that and let's carry on with the plant chores that I wanted to get through. And then I will figure out a place for it because I'm not quite sure yet. I might have, mm, I'm not sure. I'll come back to that. I do, however, have that which will keep it nice and secure and stable. So wherever I put it, it hopefully won't topple over. But over the weekend, I also had a proper reorganise of my cabinet, which I don't know if you can really tell, maybe you didn't think 
it was looking as bad as I thought it was before, but I just thought it was looking very dull and I wasn't very happy with it. But I feel now like I've like I've taken things out of prop boxes and I've put them in there and I've just kind of had a bit of a mix up and I think it looks lovely. Also, my God, look at that new leaf on my alocasia heterophylla. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Also, sorry if the camera's doing weird things. I can't really see what's going on. Uh, but one thing that I do want to do, and it just reminded me, so I'm going to take it out of my cabinet and take it over to the kitchen, but my, al uh, not alocasia, Anthurium Platinum, Luxurians Platinum, uh, this one's currently looking a little bit dusty just because it has had diatomaceous earth on it. I'm going to give it a rinse off and a wipe over. Um, but I wanted to try growing this one in the way that I showed you at the beginning of this video, the way with the semi-hydro on the bottom and then a really chunky soil mix on top. And I washed up this jar just before I started filming because I was like, this will be perfect. And I feel like that plant will look gorgeous in there and it would just be a little bit easier for me to keep on top of watering. It is an anthurium that I found quite likes, like more water than some others. There we go, you can see the breath down now. Yeah, I've been watering this one. Well, I found that this one likes to be watered around about once a week in this temperature at the moment. And when I have let it dry out, I've been getting like leaves like that. So to be honest, I might give them a little prune back actually. Let's get properly set up and then we can give it a go. Okay, so I've got some lecker here that I've been wanting to get rid of. So I'm gonna fill the bottom with that. And the next question was, when did you last throw a plant in the bin? Um, I threw a plant in the bin at the weekend. Uh, I'm really, as you guys know, I'm really bad at throwing things away. I'm trying to get better at it. I don't want to like promote the fact that we should just bin plants when we give up with them. Um, but at the same time, I think I'm a little bit too the other way. And I'm like, no, you can absolutely save it when it is just beyond the saving sometimes. And I had an Anthurium, which I believe was the Anthurium avartifolium. And it was fine. I just wasn't a massive fan of the way it was growing to me. I, I don't know. It's been doing okay. I've shown it in a couple of videos. It's been doing fine, but it's just not been a plant that I particularly enjoyed. And I let it dry out way too much. It went very curly, very crispy. And I was looking at it and I was like, I could chop it back. Or I could just not. And I decided to not. And I decided to bin it. Uh, and although I did feel bad at the time, there's something like, there is something quite mentally cleansing about getting rid of a plant that you're not loving anymore and I did feel so much better afterwards and now just looking over at that corner and not seeing that plant there makes me happier so I'm glad that I did it. <laughs> um, but as I say I think what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna chop those bottom two leaves there just because they look like they're starting to yellow a little bit and I'd like the plant to be able to conserve its energy a little bit better. Although you can see on these older leaves a little bit more if I just dust them off a little bit more of the bluey tinge to it because as I say I've got diatomaceous earth on the mother leaf so it's a little bit dusty at the moment but it's a beautiful beautiful one I just think I'm going to be able to monitor it better growing it in this way I haven't actually tried growing anthurium Ooh. Oops. <laughs> in this way yet so it will be exciting Oh, it's got lovely, lovely roots. I'm just gonna mix up, where's my bowl? A little bit more of a chunky mix here with lots of bark and stuff like that. And then I am just gonna reuse the soil. Can you see what I'm doing? I never know. There we go. Um, I am just gonna reuse the soil that it was in just because this is a fairly new soil mix. I only potted this one up from what it was in before two months ago maybe. And 
and someone asked how did you find out about ADHD? I'm in the process at the moment. Um, I'm guessing you mean uh, my diagnosis with ADHD. Uh, so actually, I can't remember if I've said this on here before, but it's kind of a funny story because I didn't set out to be diagnosed with ADHD and I only started reading up on it in the last couple of years. Um, so when I was at drama school, I needed to get a test for dyslexia done, but I, like I already knew I was dyslexic, but they needed to have it like officially done and put on their system um, so that I could have certain things like uh, gel filters to help me with scripts and stuff like that, because it was an area that I just really struggled in. Uh, and so, also hold that thought, I need bark and I haven't got it over here. So yeah, I went through the process of being tested for dyslexia and whilst I was having my tests done for dyslexia, they also would like, it went on for absolutely ages. There were like, there were written things, there were, um, they, they basically just did a load, a load of tests. And like at the time I remember saying to my mum, it was like, this is way more than they've ever done for dyslexia before. Um, oh, for goodness sake. Bear with again, that's the door. My goodness, it's all go this morning, isn't it? Um, so where did I get to? Uh, yes, they were doing, I, I had no idea why, but they were doing lots of other things that they wouldn't usually do for dyslexia, and anyway, it came back that I had ADHD. Um, but I got that at the same time that I got my dyslexia test results, and as I say, really, at the time, I just wanted the dyslexia result, because it meant that I would be able to, like, it kind of ticked a box for me. Um, and so I didn't look into what it meant to have ADHD, like what kind of support was available. I didn't look into any of that stuff for a really long time, like way after, long after, sorry, long after I'd left drama school. Um, and I graduated in 2017, so quite a while ago. Uh, and I was just scrolling on TikTok one day and I was scrolling through some ADHD videos and it was basically about like common symptoms of ADHD and like all of these things that really, really resonated with me. And I was like, oh my God, I was like, this does really make sense. Um, and again, I called my mum and I was chatting to my mum about it. And I was like, do you remember that diagnosis I got at Lambda? I was like, maybe, like, maybe we should look into that. Maybe that it like wasn't worth brushing to one side so much. And I know I shouldn't have brushed the diagnosis to one side, but I, I honestly didn't know. I didn't know anything about it apart from it was commonly, and I, again, this is probably a generational thing, but it was the sort of thing that like I think a few really disruptive kids at my school had um, and that's what I thought of when I heard ADHD and I when I got those test results I was like well that's obviously not me that's obviously a mistake so I just completely ignored it um, so yeah only in the last kind of three four years have I actually started um, doing more digging and kind of talking about it more and like I guess kind of just like embracing it a little bit more because it is just a part of a part of who I am um, and I saw such a wonderful thing I can't remember where I saw it it was online somewhere but I saw such a wonderful thing a while ago uh, or a couple of weeks ago because there's a lot of and again different generations think different things but like there's a lot of people that will say things along the lines of like, oh, well nowadays everyone, everyone seems to have ADHD and everyone's neurodivergent and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I saw a really wonderful post by someone, I cannot for the life of me remember who it was. And they basically just said, they were like, up until uh, the late 1960s, we were still tying children's, like left-handed children's hands behind their backs at school because we thought it was bad. Uh, and obviously after that point, we kind of started embracing the fact that people did write with both hands and we stopped doing that, thank God. But it didn't mean that there were suddenly way more left-handed children being born. It just meant that because there was more understanding of around the fact that everybody was a little bit different, we weren't tying their hands behind their backs and therefore it felt like there were more, but there weren't actually more. If that makes any sense at all. If I can find this quote, I'll put it on the screen because it put it so beautifully... Oh my God, why can't I speak today? It was beautiful and concise is what I'm trying to say. And I was like, that makes so much sense. It is so not the fact that that every other person you meet nowadays has kind of got something like that. It is just the fact that there is more education around it. And so many of us are in the, yeah, are in the bracket of being a little bit different in that sense. So it's just the fact that we're embracing it a bit more, which is such a good thing. 
So yeah, that was my experience with it. It wasn't like a diagnosis that I set out to get. Um, and to be honest, I think like having lived like the way that I live and like my thoughts and all sorts and like just the way that I am with things, like it, it didn't really feel like, I don't know, it just feels, it's just a part of who I am and it's just one of those things and it has very annoying days and like there's parts of it that I absolutely can't stand and there's other parts of it that I'm like, you know what, I kind of embrace them because I've always been the sort of person that's kind of quite uh, impulsive, creative, I love trying new things, I get obsessed over new things very, very easily. Um, but I think that's kind of cool because although it's annoying that I've got like craft supplies for 20 different projects that I've never started, I've always got something to keep me entertained and interested and I'm very rarely, in fact, hardly ever bored. Like I'll always find something to do even if it's not the thing I'm meant to be doing. Uh, but yes, that is that one done. So that's what it looks like. You can't really tell where I'm sat at the moment but I will just fill a little reservoir at the bottom and I'll let you know how it gets on because I think it looks lovely in that way. So yeah, that's exciting. Um, it's not, however, what I was going to do next. And in fact, before I move on ugh, to the thing that needs to be done, but I can't really be bothered to do. Um, before I move on to the next thing, there's a plant that has been in the bathroom that I'm just gonna grab because it's one of Ross's and I would like to pot it up for him. So this is a Skindapsis cutting and I can't remember if it's, what is it? Is that a silvery Anne? I'm never quite sure to be honest. Um, but this is one that Ross got at one of the plant swaps that we went to together and it's been propagating in sphagnum moss for quite a while. Um, and in one of my Patreon live chats the other day, I started taking it out of moss and I mean, it's got a crazy big root system. Look at that. Um, and I was gonna pot it up and then we got a bit distracted. So I never ended up doing that. So it's just been sat in water. Uh, and basically I just like to transfer it to soil and I think I'm probably gonna put it into a little hanging pot because I know Ross loves the hanging plants. We don't have that many hanging plants in the bedroom. So I thought this could look quite nice in there. Um, so I'm probably just gonna go in with the same mix as this. I'm just gonna add a little bit more soil base mix to it. And then I would have thought that would be absolutely fine for this plant. One of you said, how often do you dust your plants? <sighs> Not often enough. <laughs> um, how often I dust them and how often I should dust them are two very different things. Uh, ideally, if I was being very good and if I was giving advice, I would say try and dust your plants every couple of weeks, like every single time you water them, ideally. Um, I used to be quite good at it. I used to be good at like going around with a microfiber glove or something and just like wiping them over as I watered them. I am not that good nowadays. I, I did dust a lot of my plants, not all of them, um, a lot of my plants over the weekend. But again, I was just having a like blitz, let's get things done kind of time. Um, in reality, a lot of them will go months without a dust. Uh, it should not be that way. But alas, it is. Um, so yeah, it's something that, I mean, to be honest, whenever I've done it, I feel so good and everything, like, although it doesn't look dusty beforehand, always, like sometimes a plant can look completely fine when you have given it a wipe down and a dust down. Just looking at your collection, I always feel like it looks so much more vibrant. It's like a really good way to just get your plants to look immediately healthier. So I do need to make more time to do it. Yeah, there we go. That is a very little hanging plant, but it's very sweet and I'm sure it will do very well in the bedroom. Uh, so the next thing that I need to do, I really need to do, um, I'm going to just move these plants out of the way because I'm going to be working with a very unhealthy plant. Um, and the next one is my jade plant, my Crassula ovata that I have had forever. I've had this plant for I think about 
six years maybe um, and I've shown you it in videos before I haven't shown you it for a while because it has not been looking good for a while I found mealybugs on this plant I think about four months ago now four months ago ish and I gave it I gave it a treatment and I kind of thought that I got I got all of them but because jade plants really don't require that much care they can be left alone for kind of like months on end and you don't need to do a lot to them it was also thrown in the bedroom and that is an area that I struggle to monitor a little bit sometimes um I didn't realize that the mealy bugs had come back and the plant just was looking very disheveled it was losing lots of leaves it was not looking good and so I then made the mistake of putting it in the bathroom and this is like I, th I think I'm bad with the bedroom. The bathroom is a whole other level because firstly the bathroom doesn't have any natural light. There is not a single window in my bathroom. But I always put plants in there when something's not wrong with them to shower them down and then I always think right well I'll come back to that one later and more often than not I completely forget about them and it can be weeks and on occasion months before they actually come out of the bathroom again, which I know sounds ridiculous. Um, so where was this from? In the anthurium there. Uh, but yeah, my jade plant has been in the windowless bathroom for at least a month. At least a month. And yeah, I am not proud of that. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping to get it back on track today. So, 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 okay. Alcohol, just in case there are active mealies, which I think there probably are. Yeah, this is the very sad plant in question. And oh my goodness, you can probably see all of that white is mealy bugs gross 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 so this is the last time i will be using my potting mat without thoroughly sterilizing it but so this plant's been in the bathroom as i say for a really long time and i could do what i've been doing previously i could get into all of the little nooks and crannies try and get all the mealy bugs gone blah 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 but seeing as I've tried that several times and they do keep coming back and also I can see at the top of the plant now its growth is starting to get much smaller. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to give it a really big prune back. Prune back, repot, check the roots. Uh, it's actually currently bone dry at the moment. It's not been cared for well this plant. Um, but yes, I do have faith that I can bring it back. And this is one that I'm not ready to give up on because this was a cutting from my friend's plant. And I'd like to allow it to live more. But I'm just going to be pretty brutal here and I'm just going to give it a very big haircut. And I'm not going to try and save these sections, I don't think. I think they are just going to come straight off. What is a plant you'll never buy again? I've had this question before and ah, uh, never buy again. I think, and this is one that I haven't said before actually, but it just sprung to mind. Um, I think a plant that I wouldn't buy again, despite it being really beautiful, is the Philodendron Sodoroi Aff, uh, which is a plant that I, for a while, absolutely loved. I've said it before but crawling plants for me have to be really worth it like they take up so much space and they grow in a little bit of a weird way you have to kind of be really committed to that plant in order to grow it as a crawling plant for me anyway like I've currently only got one crawling plant in my collection uh, I have downsized massively on crawling plants just because I physically don't have the space for them so yeah it just it just became, oh my god, this is so wobbly because it's so dry. In fact, I'm going to completely take it out. Um, yeah, it became a plant that was just, for me, it felt more stressed than anything looking after it. And it also was so prone to spider mites. It was getting spider mites left, right and centre. And I just wasn't enjoying growing it. I tried bringing it back so many times. And by the time I finally gave up, I, like, I feel like mentally I'd given up like six months before. So I really pushed myself with that plant to the point of 
really kind of disliking it, like actively disliking it. Um, and although, as I say, I can still look at pictures of it and think it's beautiful because it is. It is such a beautiful plant. It's one that I just don't have any desire to go out and get for myself and grow again. Ah, <sighs> okay. That always looks kind of like bonsai-ish now. Um, but what I'm going to do is I am just going to go over this with isopropyl alcohol. Um, I can see some mealies. So yeah, I'm going to get in there with my brush. I'm not going in with the little brush today either. I brought my big, big brush over. Uh, so I'm going to give this a thorough blitz. The good thing is though, there's no root mealies, which I'm quite surprised about. I really did think it would have spread down. Oh yeah, and this is a question I wanted to circle back to because somebody said, how, how did quitting smoking go and have you still quit? Uh, this is something I haven't spoken about in quite a while. Um, and yes, so I, I had, I, I've quit actual smoking for, I think about three years now, ish. Um, maybe two years, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I was vaping after that, and that, honestly, I swear to God, and I've said it before, but I swear that is more addictive than actual smoking. Um, and I decided for Stoptober, last October, that I was gonna try and quit vaping. I've tried quitting vaping many, many times, never successfully, and I, actually kind of said it out loud on YouTube and I was like right I was like this is gonna help to keep me motivated I'm gonna really try and stick to it and I'm very very happy to say that I have not had any nicotine since that October so when was that October November December January February March April May, June, July. that's nine months nine months and that is the best I have ever done I'm I honestly I'm so proud of myself for it and I feel so much better like it's just so nice to not feel reliant on something I've said it in my videos before but I know for a fact from just knowing myself and my life and my tendencies um I do have quite an addictive personality and it is just the most freeing feeling to not be constantly like oh my god where's my vape where's like where's my next hit of nicotine gonna come because you get so ridiculously reliant on these things uh, and to be honest it's it is something that I never for a very long time never really saw myself being able to quit um and it was it was really difficult like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it it was really really hard and even now having not had any nicotine for nine months even now I will sometimes be out and I get a smell like a, a oh in fact one of my downstairs neighbours when he has a cigarette I literally open my balcony doors and I'm like it smells so good <laughs> but I mean I think I kind of feel like that will always be there because there was that like I did enjoy it this is the thing I did enjoy it um so although I am really happy that I have managed to kick the habit um I do miss it from time to time it's just not something that is constantly on my mind anymore so yeah if you're if you're struggling with it if you're trying to quit honestly just try and power through i got something um called a breathless a breath lace like like a necklace but a breathless um when i was quitting vaping that time and i only used it actually for probably the first couple of weeks and it just took away the like something to do with your hands like something in your mouth uh, and although it doesn't like give you any kind of like I don't know that it doesn't give you anything on the lungs I would find that like putting a little bit of essential oil in the top or something like that would just kind of help like minty essential oil or something um, I found that really really helped me and I as I say only used it very briefly but I feel like the initial kind of period when you're first trying to quit which can be so difficult I find it really helped but yeah, I mean, nowadays, it's weird, like, obviously, it, I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing that makes me feel a little bit older because I'm like, times have changed so much. It's so rare that you see youngsters actually smoking cigarettes now because everyone's on the vape. And it's not that when I was younger, we didn't know, like, of course we knew that smoking was bad for you. And like, my mum was so angry with me when she found out I'd started smoking. 
But I think nowadays there's just so much education around it that it's not even seen as like a cool thing to do anymore, which is amazing. It's so great that that's changed. I know we now need to kick vaping because it's ridiculously accessible where it shouldn't be. Someone just said begonia thoughts. And I remember seeing this question when I was doing a report and chat maybe like a month ago. And I was like, do I talk about begonia now or do I wait a little bit? Because I, I if, you, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know I have got much more into begonia in the last kind of couple of months. I've acquired a few and I'm really enjoying growing them. And before I talk more about that, I'm just going to change my camera battery because my camera is about to die. There we go. Um, what was I just saying? What was I just talking about? What was I just saying? Oh yeah, begonia thoughts. Um, so I've got two begonias, two begonias in my collection currently. I did recently get rid of one as well. My begonia elbow picked her. I finally gave up on that begonia. It's one that I've so tried to love and get to love me back and we just weren't getting along so I gave up on it. Um, but my begonia Sinbad is the apple of my eye at the moment. Oh my god, I love that plant so 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 much. It's beautiful. Um, and then also the, uh, the one that, that I can't remember, Hertella, begonia Hertella. Uh, the one that I got as a one leaf cutting at the Bristol plant swap and is growing like an absolute weed. It is honestly the fastest growing plant I have ever in my life encountered. Those are two of my not just favourite begonias but favourite plants at the moment. So yeah, I feel like I am finally really coming around to begonia. I'm not saying all types of begonia because there's some that I still think are a little bit weird and not me uh, but those are two that I absolutely adore so yeah I asked in a video recently and I got some amazing suggestions from you guys but again if there's any begonias that you really love that you think I might like as well comment them down below and I will look into them I went on such a tangent after that video that I asked um I asked the question and I think it was about a week ago I said I said the same thing I was like if any of you guys have got any begonia recommendations let me know and I have added so many begonias now to my wish list from your recommendations so thank you uh so yeah that's my oh oops just knocked another section off um that is my current thoughts on begonia it's very early days but I'm excited to see where it takes me because there has there have been certain genuses of plants that I've got into and then got a little bit obsessed with and I mean Hoya is a prime example to be honest like I never used to love Hoya that much and all of a sudden like everyone was saying if you get if you get a few Hoya you'll love them and you'll want to get more uh and I remember I got one and I was like no it's okay and then I got another one I was like oh interesting and then I was suddenly searching for Hoyas and researching Hoyas and ordering Hoya cuttings and then all of a sudden I was like oh my god I can't stop uh, I'm wondering if it's going to be the same with begonia but yeah as I say I, I do just get a little bit obsessive over things sometimes um but no I'm I'm excited about it and another question was what would your dream home be this is such a hard one to actually just like answer out loud because there's loads of yeah if I if I was to be able to design my own house it's funny actually I feel like you really it's almost like how a goldfish grows to its bowl if you'd asked me that question a couple of years ago when I was living in my mum's living uh living in my mum's conservatory um when I was uh living back home at my mum's again for like the fourth time uh, and growing my plants out of a conservatory. If you'd asked me to describe my dream home then, I probably would have described this flat. Uh, and I love this flat, I feel so grateful to live here. I, I honestly do adore it. Um, but now that obviously Ross has moved in and I've got many more plants and I've obviously got a Yoli, uh, my dream home vision has kind of changed a little bit. and. I mean, I'm in no rush to get out of here, but I think at some point in the next year or two, me and Ross will probably 
be thinking about getting a bigger place because um, this is quite a small one bedroom flat. I think my dream home now, I, I love the open planness of this flat and I know that that's something quite modern and actually if you were to give me the choice I think I would go for something not not more old-fashioned but just like with a little bit more character like this I live in a new build currently and although it's very practical it always feels very clean like there's certain things that I really love about it um, but it doesn't have as much character as I would like from from my dream home um, so yeah like I imagine like a big cosy kind of country kitchen with an arger and like lots of rugs and but yeah as I say the the open planness and the the like big windows and lots of light I want lots of things I want lots of things and I'm not quite sure all of them fit into the same house to be honest but um yeah obviously natural light would be fantastic um just more space uh, although I love having all of my plants crammed in a small space and kind of feeling super, super jungly, it would also be quite nice to be able to space them out a little bit and be able to kind of appreciate them a little bit more individually. Like on a very regular basis at the moment, I will be trying to kind of get through to check on one plant and I will end up pulling another one over and that will send another one crashing down. And I have so many accidents with my plants because I'm trying to do so much in quite a small space. So yeah, just being able to have a little bit more space for them would also be lovely. A garden as well. I'd love to have a garden. I've never really done any outdoor gardening. And although currently, like I, like, I don't even know, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know if I'd be any good, I don't know if I'd enjoy it, but I always associate, the, I always associate the garden with my mum, and I love just like sitting down the garden and watching her garden, and I, I, yeah, it's something that I would really, really, really like to do more of, so yeah, also obviously for Yoli, not having to take her down to the car park to go for a wee would be so useful to be able to just open the back doors and let her run out would be such a dream <laughs> um also i'm gonna do something potentially controversial um but so that's what the jade is looking like now i know she's looking very bare but she is mealy bug free and i feel like this is giving her the best chance to grow back healthily Usually if a plant has had mealybugs as badly, I will completely change out the soil, but because this plant's been in the bathroom for such a long time and hasn't had a water, this soil is really dry around the roots and I've just tried to kind of crumble a bit of it off and it won't crumble away. So I'm gonna just pot it back up and pot soil around this. And as I say, that's not what I would typically recommend doing, but maybe when I don't know, in maybe a few weeks time when the plants had a little bit of time to adjust, I might consider repotting again. I know that sounds like a silly decision to be making, but I just don't want to risk losing the whole thing. And I just think if I break up the root system now, I might cause the plant more trauma. And I don't want to do that. So again, I'm gonna take some of the mix that I've already mixed up and I've got a bag of grit here. This is grit from Soil Ninja and it's essentially just lots of little rocks. It's like really chunky sand and I'm gonna just mix a load of that in there as well. So this plant's got great drainage because it is obviously a succulent and that is super important. And one of you asked if I would try the Queen Anthurium again. Uh, oh, the Anthurium Warroquianum. I have this yearning for a, for a Warroquianum. 
um, and I just have had such bad luck with them. I feel like I'm so I'm still very much working with the Anthurium Regal, which in my experience seems to have fairly similar care needs um, and is similarly dramatic to the Rockwianum. Um, that one is still going. It's getting ready to give me a new leaf. And if I can, can feel like I've kind of nailed that one, I think I might be more inclined to try the Rockwianum again. But at the moment, I just don't, I almost feel like it wouldn't be fair on the plants because I have, I've killed like two or three of them now and they are beautiful, very unusual and highly desirable plants. I'm not meaning to kill them, but I feel like I should just, I don't know, maybe wait for a new environment or wait until I've yeah, figured the one out that I find to be similar. Uh, so yeah. Currently, it's not on the cards. I'd like it to be, but it's not. Do you guys have a, like one specific plant that you struggle with? And it might be a plant that you see other people growing really well and you, can't, you just can't get your head around it. Let me know if you do. Let me know in the comments below what that is, because for me, 100% it is the Warokbianum. I see other people growing that plant beautifully. And I've got loads of other quote unquote difficult plants that I find not, not even necessarily easy, but like I just feel like I've got my head around them. And the rock piano is one that I just have not. And I don't seem to be able to. One of you asked tea or coffee. Uh, oh, I was gonna say coffee. Like I do drink a fair bit of coffee. Um, and I'm not a, like a bre an English breakfast tea kind of gal. I'll drink it if I'm given it and there's nothing else. Um, but I am a herbal tea person. I love herbal tea, like peppermint and licorice, uh, green tea. I drink more coffee than I drink herbal tea on the whole. But then I go through phases of drinking loads of herbal tea, so I don't know. But, <laughs> cool, that is that one all done and potted up and hopefully now I'm going to be keeping such a close eye on this plant and to be honest I might even it is still raining I might put it out I'll obviously let any alcohol evaporate but I might put it out on the balcony for a bit um and then yeah again come back to it and see how it's getting on because this one was growing ginormous I think that's how the mealybugs got so overlooked so quickly I reckon once it gets going again, it will kind of burst back into life and start giving me lots of new growth. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure to not keep it in the bathroom, but to keep it isolated very well away from my other plants. Um, so yeah, I'm now going to go and wash my hands, probably change my clothes and have a proper, like a proper tidy up of this area. Give it a vacuum, probably give the floor a wipe down and definitely give my potting mass a wipe down because as I say, I have struggled with mealybugs in my collection on and off since living here. And currently I don't think I have any other mealybug, definitely no other mealybug infestations in this room. And I want to keep it that way. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like I've just kind of waffled non-stop today, but I also think that's been the headspace that I've been in and I kind of needed to. Um, so yeah, if you were doing stuff along with me, I hope you got loads done. Uh, and I will be cracking through more plant chores very soon because I've got a massive, massive list of things that I am keen to get as on top of as I can. Because as I say, just starting to get a little bit on top over these last few days has felt so good. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, plant lovers.